Hello, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, my name's Adam. I'm the director here of Adelaide Health Simulation at the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences. It would be real, my privilege today to take you on a bit of a VIP backstage tour of our simulation facility. Um, just, just to give you a bit of background, uh, what we're about to go and see is, is almost like a pretend hospital. And this is where we teach our students of medicine, nursing, allied health and so on, how to become safe practitioners in the future. But everything you see is pretend, okay? So we might see some, we're gonna go to an operating theater, we're gonna go to a birthing suite, we're gonna see actors that look like patients. They're not real, so you're very safe. So come on, come with me and we'll have a look. One of the things that I'm super proud of as the director of Adelaide Health Simulation is that our facility is currently the only accredited facility for learning and teaching in Australia with the Society for Simulation and Healthcare. And we think that's pretty cool. One of the questions I often get asked is, so when does simulation education begin for your students? And the truth is it begins pretty much straight away. So we purpose built this facility in 2017 and an example of, of early training in simulation is something perhaps you might not think about, but things as simple as how do we shower our patients or how do we attend to their activities of daily living. So this is one of our facilities where we learn how to brush patients' teeth, give them a shower, and of course, attend to their bathroom needs. If you head down a little bit further, one of the other spaces I'd like to show you is our pharmacy. So this pharmacy is filled with pretend medication. So you would imagine as a clinician when you're learning the decision of what medication to prescribe, how do you administer it safely, how do you observe for the intended effects or the side effects um, is difficult. So what we like is when our students attend the hospital to do this for the first time in a real patient, they've done it in simulation plenty of times before and that's really the purpose of what we're doing. Let's head now to our exam system. So I'm just going to pause and spend a little bit of time here, if I may. Learning in simulation is intended to learn in a very safe environment. So we really encourage our students to make mistakes so we can guide them through on their journey. But at some stage, we need to make sure that they are safe and competent to practice and we need to check their learning. Now, you might be used to exams being something you do in writing. Um, in healthcare, we still do written exams, but one of the things that we like to do is what's called an OSCE, or an Objective Structured Clinical Exam. And this is where you come to simulation and you actually act out, if you like, what you're meant to be doing. So our students get to tap onto the computer system that you'll see outside of every room. And when they do that, the instructions for what they need to achieve inside the room are activated. But what's really cool is everything that happens in this room is, is recorded and the student can also access that at home and have a listen. So come on inside and let's meet one of our simulated actors. Dr. Gluck, hello. So Sam is here today as one of our examiners. Lottie, hello. hello. So Lottie is a professional actor and she's one of our simulated patients. And in simulation, often people think of the mannequins that we use, and I'm going to show you one of those shortly. But we believe here that using professional actors is an amazing way of helping our students learn how to build rapport with patients, consent, and give uh, real life skills in building communication and empathy. So this looks like a real hospital, I hope you feel. If you have a look at the back here, we've got things like working oxygen or pretend oxygen. We've got medical air, working suction, a medical record and you can see Lottie's vital signs on the uh, on the vital signs monitor there. So the students will come in for their exam and they will actually engage with what appears to be a real patient and all of that's being recorded and the examiner's in the corner there marking them so we can give them feedback. So how's your care been in the in the place today Lottie? All right? It's been really good. Very good. Thank you for everything you do. We'll be back to see you later. So come on now we're going to head to the storeroom that sounds like a bit of a strange place to go, but I did promise you a backstage pass. So we're gonna head now into the storeroom. And just like a hospital, this is where we keep all of our equipment, all of our syringes, needles, dressings, suture equipment, but it's also where we store and maintain our mannequins. Now, human patient simulators are like robots, if you like, or computers. And Martin is one of our simulation technicians here who is working on one of the mannequins. I wanted to show you inside, just to show you how complex these mannequins are. So they have heart sounds, breath sounds, they can talk, uh, they have pulses, we can do CPR, we can do chest strains, all sorts. 
So it's like a mini robot. And of course, I just introduced you to an actor, but there's a lot of things that we can't do on an actor that we need to do on a mannequin. So here's the storeroom. Now, I'm going to uh, just warn you one more time. Things are about to get a bit more interesting. We're going to go to a birthing suite and an operating theater and a geriatric ward. So there is going to be some fake blood and other things. So just to warn you, but let's carry on and let's get to the exciting stuff. So we're going to start in the birthing suite, but there is actually a live class going on and I'm not kidding you there, there actually is. So we're just going to go and spend a couple of minutes in here and I'd like to introduce you to one, a good friend of mine, Lucina. So head on in. I'm really sorry guys, we won't be here for too long. All right. So this is our birthing suite and this is our mannequin, Lucina. Hi Adam, how are you going? I'm good, Lucina. How are you? I'm doing great. I've just had a beautiful baby. Yeah, a boy or a girl? A little boy. Congratulations. How are the students today? Yeah, lots of, lots of students. They're doing a great job. All right, well, I'm sorry to interrupt your class and we'll be back to see you later. Okay, see Okay, you bye. Of... Take bye. care. All right, let's head out of here. Thank you, everybody. And now, let's come around and meet some of our medical students. Hello. How are you going, Fergus? Yeah, welcome. Very good. Sorry to interrupt your session. So this is um, four of our medical students who are, who are in a competition nationally at the end of the year called the Emergency Medicine Challenge. And what I'm really proud of here is they've actually written their own scenarios and they're doing their own learning, unis, u, learning using simulation. So what is your scenario today, Fergus? This scenario, we have a, a young gentleman who yep. has a small bowel obstruction, secondary to ad adhesions. Yep and we're currently managing them with inserting a nasogastric tube, decompressing the stomach, and we're also set up an IV cannula and giving them some fluids. That is one awesome looking mannequin you've got there. Yeah, it's very <laughs> All right, well enjoy guys, sorry to interrupt you, and no, we'll no, see no. you a bit later. All right, let's head on now down to a really important um, aspect of our education, I think, and we've talked about the fact that we have infants and birthing, but we live in a population um, that is aging. So one of the things that I feel quite passionately about is that we need to ensure that our education um, covers care of the older person. So we pay particular attention to geriatric care and end of life care. Um, and so here is, who have we got here today? What are them? Graham. Graham and Mavis. Graham and Mavis. So our students can really um, learn to build empathy and communication skills with the older person. Um, and talk about some of the more complex areas of end-of-life care and become quite comfortable with that, which is important. All right, we've got two more spots to go, so I'm going to head over now. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't wake anybody up. <laughs> All right, let's head on through here. All right, Michael, how are you going? Good, Adam, how are you? Good, I'm just taking some people on a tour. Now, yep. this, this is really where the simulation magic starts to happen. And this is where it becomes quite technologically involved. So what we're in now, if you could imagine this was a, a, a theatre, we are backstage uh, with the stage manager and the lighting crew. This is where everything gets controlled on the mannequins and the lighting and the vital signs. And it's all by wireless technology from the computers into the operating theatre here. So the next place I'm going to take you to is the operating theatre and we'll see what Michael's uh, uh, created around there. You'll notice as we wander past that the nurses and surgeons are scrubbing in for the case, which is of course what we do in real life. And in simulation, we try and recreate everything. So that includes scrubbing, gloving and gowning. And now, just to pause for one second, remember that all the blood is fake, but we're gonna go into our operating theatre. Hello, Dr. Gluck and Dr. Boyer. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah. All right. Good. I'm just taking some guests on a tour and I wanted to finish here in the in the simulation suite. So what operation are you doing here today? So we're just doing an uh, open periumbilical hernia repair. Very good. So you could imagine as a student of the health professions coming into an environment like this for the first time can be incredibly stressful. So we're very privileged to be able to, able to educate our postgraduate and undergraduate nursing students and medicine in a simulated environment and let them know what it feels like to wear the heavy gowns and the and the hats and the goggles, which can be quite, quite difficult. It is quite yeah. warm, isn't it? <laughs> um, so this is one of our most complex suites. We use the HPS anaesthetic mannequin, 
which is an asset that will allow us to actually deliver anaesthetic gases and be monitored on real equipment. Um, so this means that we can also provide simulation to a very advanced level to postgraduate learners. So that is we meet our students as undergraduates and we started showering and brushing teeth and we can simulate right through to very complex cases like surgical procedures and anaesthesia. So I better let you two crack on with it. Hey? You do with a hand. Yeah. You'd yeah. like a hand? Yeah. Well, I better go and scrub in. It has been a pleasure meeting you. I hope you've enjoyed the tour and I really hope we get to meet in person one day. Thank you for your attention. Have a great day.